Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's show. So the market finishes the week in a, in a stretch of fantastic strength. So the questions on many of our minds going through the, the period of the week, the last couple of weeks is, you know, is this a bear market rally, the end of it? Or is this the continuation? Is this the, the next step among further steps going forward? On Friday, we love to wrap the week. So we'll look at the big picture indicators. Now that we have Friday's close locked in, we'll look at the evolution of those long-term trends. Also answering some of your questions from the Final Bar Mailbag. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Final Bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Dave Keller, the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com. Thanks for joining me every weekday after the close to break down the movements in the markets from a technical perspective, connect the short term to the long term. And Fridays are the day that we take a step back and, and just try to get a sense of how things have progressed. As usual, things get very exciting, leading right up to the moment we start hitting record for the final bar with the last 90 minutes or so of trading really accelerating to the upside. You know, I think going through this week, just talking with a number of my guests, you could get that general vibe of, you know, bear market rally sort of nearing some sort of end point and, and hitting these key levels and what we would look for. And then you get days like today that just appear to be follow through days with lots of decent charts breaking to the upside. So we're going to break all those down and, and try to make sense with the long term indicators we, uh, we look at. Now, coming up next week on this show and elsewhere on Stock Charts TV, we have a lot of uh, fantastic hosts and guests to help you make sense of things, help you try to answer the questions on your mind. Um, on this show, on the 21st, on Tuesday, we have JC Peretz from All Star Charts. We have Jeff Huge on Wednesday from JWH Investments. And then on uh, the 23rd, on Thursday, we have Tony Dwyer from Canaccord Genuity. Uh, also on Monday, our next episode of Behind the Charts, that's our interview style show. We really sit down with uh, you know, strategists and analysts and traders and, and pick their brain about how they approach things and, and, and the experiences that molded them over their career. Uh, we visited Elliott Wave International outside of Atlanta a little while ago, sat down with uh, Steve Hochberg, one of their strategists, and uh, Peter Kendall, who uh, who's responsible for analyzing social mood. And I think what better time to hear how they're making sense of the markets than with this current environment. Getting to our market recap, let's look at what, what sort of happened. And I hate to giggle as I'm sort of giving the market recap, but it's so entertaining to watch this market. I mean, it's fascinating how these things have evolved. And, and again, with, with all my guests that have come on, I hope you get the sense that we're all trying to get our head around this environment. We are, we are very much, pun intended, in uncharted territory in terms of the severity of the decline. And we've had declines before, but the, the speed of it, right? The, the four-week period where we just ruptured from new highs in mid-February to 30% down in mid-March. And from then... You know, some stocks have recovered 100% of that sell-off, uh, the average stock uh, over half of the way back up. Um, so it's, it's really been a dramatic V bottom so far. So today, the S&P certainly seeming to follow through on the upside with the S&P up 75 points, finishing around 28.75, uh, which is up 2.7% uh, about. Mid caps up even more, small caps up 4.5%. So this was led by the juice. This is very much a risk on type of day, which is, uh, which is pretty incredible. And, and again, you know, we don't dig a ton into the news flow. I, I'm assuming that you will consume that on your own from other places. And I, and I feel like what we should focus on are the charts and help you make sense of how the charts relate to what you're reading elsewhere. But obviously, the markets are all about expectation. The more expectation there is that we will have a quicker recovery, that things will get quote unquote back to normal more quickly than, uh, than we might have feared. Uh, that's all going to you know, uh, maybe alleviate fear and fuel some of this fear of, uh, of missing out, fuel the FOMO that's going to drive things higher. The VIX now back below 40, but again, still relatively elevated, still in the realm of, uh, of pretty significant bear market ranges. Let's look at a daily chart of the S&P and see what's happened here. So, you know, with today's close, we've now gone above the 50-day moving average for the first time since mid-March, right? The last time we were above the 50-day was right before the big gap down, which was the beginning, this uh, sort of breakaway gap going down into uh, accelerating into the, the sell-off over the next couple of weeks. 
since then we remain below the 50 and it's been a non-issue. I haven't even, we haven't even talked about moving averages on the indexes for so long. Now we're back up there. And so, you know, again, with a lot of my, my guests this week, we talked about where we are at and we've retraced now over 50% of the, uh, of the sell off from February to March. We're right about in that area where if this is a bear market rally, this is about where you'd expect them to end somewhere in this period. And I think the lower end of that was down around 2,700, 2,750. We clearly went right through it. The next one's kind of where we're at now, right? It's sort of that 2,800, 2,875. And I think the sort of point of no return is right at 3,000. That's right below the 200 day moving average. That would be a 61.8% uh, retracement from uh, from this uh, low. Sorry, this is from the low from um, from the market low in uh, December of eighteen. So you know between there and about twenty nine fifty, that's sort of that that final level. And then if we break that, there's nothing really preventing stocks from returning to uh, to previous highs. But again, I you know as a technician looking at these charts, it certainly feels like this is where a bear market rally would most likely exhaust. I think it's worth noting the RSI is still in bear market territory. And what I mean by that is in a bear market phase, you fluctuate from oversold to around 60, never really get above 60. And we still have not gotten above that, uh, that key level. Let's get back to our member dashboard review, some of, the, uh, some of the sector movements, some stock ideas, and then we'll get to uh, wrapping the week here. Um, you know, looking at sectors, energy, the big winner today with uh, the energy sector up over 10% that really accelerated through the course of the day. You had financials up number two at uh, 5%. So there was a huge uh, move on these, uh, on these names. So uh, the XLF was up, you know, was around 22 and closed around 2240. So it really pushed higher and higher through the course, uh, through the course of the day. Industrials up pretty, pretty big as well. On the bottom, you had communication services and technology. So if you're if you're bearish and you're looking for a confirmation bias sort of evidence, I, I hate to encourage that. Uh, but again, the fact that the big you know, communication services and the technology names were not at the top of the list, it's the only thing I can find in here that isn't sort of a glowing positive that things are kind of doing pretty well, right? Financial recovering, those had been all bear flags or breaking down. We'll look uh, in a second at one of the regional banks that just kind of turned on a, on a dime and and, uh, and went back higher. In terms of the stocks that drove things up, you'll see a lot of energy stocks. These are the market movers, the, the stocks with the biggest percent gainers today. And again, it's a real vote of confidence, a return to strength. So you see Hess, Valero, a lot of uh, names you may, not, may or may not be familiar with. You're gonna see some, uh, some stocks like Citizens Financial, CFG, some other uh, regional banks, Comerica in here. Um, also Boeing up uh, 14%. So certainly, again, these are stocks that are coming out of very bombed out levels. But when you look at a chart of Boeing, you know, it's really a consolidation period, right? It's, it's, a, it's a symmetrical triangle. So you had the big sell off, you had the rally. And from then, while, you know, the S&P has sort of gone higher, you know, this is more of a, a coil pattern, more of a sideways trend. And arguably today, we broke out of that symmetrical triangle to the upside. So I think what's going to be key for this sort of chart is Monday and seeing if you get the follow through. You had the breakout today. That's great. Do you validate that on Monday with further upside, with, with a, a continuation of that breakout, or do we return back in that range? And I think that's for something like Boeing. I, I, I still feel like it's you know, a guilty until proven innocent, to be honest with you. I think it, it, you lean towards you know, weakness in some of those charts until you get follow through. And again, I think, I think Monday would be pretty key for that. In terms of other stocks, we don't have time to go through all the, all the charts, obviously. And, and in our next segment, uh, we're going to get into some of the longer term charts. But I just want to highlight a couple stocks. Uh, that jumped off the page at me. One was Boston Scientific BSX. So you have stocks like this that are now breaking the 61.8% level. So if you take the sell-off, this actually peaked out at the end of last year, bottomed out third week in March. And then you can see we hit the 38.2% level, pulled back. We hit the 50% level. Now we've hit the 61.8% level. We closed above it. Just like I mentioned previously, um, you know, you'd want to, like with Boeing, you'd want to see a follow through next week and, and see a continuation of that. But Stocks like BSX back above their 50-day and, uh, and pushing through the last Fibonacci level. Next one's uh, CFG Citizens Financial. So this shows you what an what a impressive rally it was today. This was yesterday. Charts like this, and we talked about the XLF and the weakness, and you know this feels like a bear flag pattern. It looks like you're breaking below that lower support line. That's not good, but you see how today we just completely flipped, and all of a sudden a, a chart like this is rallying and going back into that range. So I think it's sort of takes away this breakdown, sort of does not confirm that. We didn't get below uh, yesterday's close. We rallied back in the range and it's still in, uh, still sort of in wait and see mode. So 
as you can tell, I think everything sort of rotated from, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit negative to today sort of uh, taking that negative away. And then charts like Boeing and others starting to feel like you're, you're getting a bid to go, uh, to go a bit higher. So that's our market recap for today. Again, so many themes, so many things to dig into. As always, I hope my Friday show helps you think about how you could dig deeper in each of these themes. I'm touching on as much as I can to give you a sense of, uh, of how I think you can use stock charts to make sense of the world around you. Our next segment, Wrap the Week. And so what we love to do on Fridays is start with the big picture, take a look at the longer term charts, how they've evolved and, and what this week does to, and so we're gonna look at a lot of longer term, a lot of weekly charts, a lot of ratios, a lot of breadth indicators and, uh, and so forth. As a reminder, if you've not seen this before, this is using our Mindful Investor Live chart list. If you don't have it, go to the articles page and go to my uh, homepage on stock charts called the Mindful Investor and you'll see a link at the top for the Mindful Investor Live chart list. You can click on it, you can save it on your login, and do whatever you want with it. But these are the charts that I've sort of put together for this weekly exercise. So, you know, first off, we're gonna start with the weekly trend on the S&P, right? And so for me, the long-term trend is looking out, you know, years, uh, you know, a couple of years down the road, if possible, certainly, you know, six to 12 months plus. Uh, and so what this model is telling, this is a 21 and 34 week exponential moving averages. This is the PPO based on those two moving averages. So if it's above zero, it's in a bullish phase. If it's below zero, it's in a bearish phase. This turned negative the third week in March, not long before the, the bottom, of course. And that's actually when you, you got a, a strong move down was on this bullish engulfing pattern out of the low since then we've been in recovery mode. So, you know, the long-term trend is still weak. The, the intermediate term trend, what I would call sort of that three to six month range, um, also negative. And you're seeing that from the weekly PPO using the traditional settings, 12, 26, and, and nine. And so the PPO again is like the weekly MACD, very, very similar, just based on percentages instead of dollar terms. That turned negative in mid-February, this sort of that medium term uh, time frame has remained negative. The tactical time frame, what you can do is look at the, uh, the histogram here, which is showing you the difference between the two PPO lines. And you can see that that turned positive a couple weeks ago and has remained in positive. So this one chart shows you tactical, the short term uh, positive, the intermediate term, the medium term uh, still negative, the long term still negative. And, I, and again, that's sort of the bias with which I'm looking at uh, the charts that I see around me. But the severity, the, 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 um, the strength of this decline out of the lows cannot be overstated. And, and again, I, you know, for me, I've been surprised at how quickly things have recovered. Um, you know, it, it truly has been a V bottom so far. And I think with certain charts, especially in financials, it's looked a lot more muted. It's looked more like a pause before the next big push down. But as you can see from the chart of the S&P, it's just been a resilient uptrend. Again, on this tactical time frame, looking at the short term, higher highs and higher lows are all you need to see. So as long as we keep making higher highs on this daily chart, as, le as, as long as these pullbacks, these lows continue to go higher, there is no reason to think that it is anything but a recovery. It's anything but a, a positive move. And, a move. And, and I think today we had, once again, a, a higher high on this tactical time frame. I think now we're seeing stocks that are testing 50-day moving averages, like you see with the S&P, testing key resistance levels, key Fibonacci levels, uh, like some of the charts we looked at with BSX, with CFG. These are stocks that are now testing you know, the next key levels. And are they able to follow through next week and able to, uh, able to recover them? Again, I, you know, I still am seeing this as a recovery move within the longer term downturn. We're still below downward sloping moving averages. It's not gotten all better yet. It's not an all clear, but it certainly is speaking to incredible strength coming out of the lows. That's absolutely right. Um, these I need to, I, I usually go through uh, and, uh, and edit all of these over the weekend and I will do so here. I'll most likely turn these all green, which is the, um, uh, the cumulative advanced decline lines. And this is one of the main breadth measures we'll look at. And uh, you just see higher highs and higher lows. And one of the concerns as we, as we came off the lows in uh, last month, whether or not the advanced decline lines would confirm that, especially with the small and the mid caps, but we're seeing they, them do that. Now, what's interesting is today you had small caps actually outperforming. That's been relatively unusual. A lot of days you've seen the big mega cap names leading on up days and down days. This has been a little different. This is more of a traditional recovery day, a push higher, a vote of confidence on, uh, on the markets going forward. Now, as always on, on Friday, after to remind you, we don't update some of the breadth measures. Depends on how we calculate them. A lot of them will wait to validate all the data before we can pop it on here. But uh, so some of these are not quite completely uh, updated for today. Some of them will be. I'll try to point them out when I do it. You know, this is kind of 
uh, hard to see because I'm bringing in a lot of data. This is looking at the last five years of new highs and new lows on the S&P 500 and on the New York Stock Exchange on the top. I think it's interesting to note, I think it's 14 stocks on the S&P uh, making a new high so far uh, this week. Uh, that's coming up from zero. So if this line continues higher, I think that's what would continue to support um, a, a bullish trend uh, on that on that short term and more and more speak to the intermediate term time frame. I think that's how the intermediate term turns more positive is if you're able to get these breadth readings to turn a positive. So again, just starting to see some stocks making new, uh, new more and more new 52 week highs, which is pretty impressive. Again, this is not updated for today, but I think it's worth noting going into today. So this will probably take higher uh, uh, tonight. Uh, you had over a quarter of the S&P above their 50-day moving average, almost a quarter of the S&P above their 200-day moving average. This is coming up from almost, you know, absolutely zero in terms of the 50-day and almost zero in terms of the 200-day. So again, more and more stocks participating, and this has absolutely been a, a dramatic rise to match the dramatic fall that you had uh, before it. Kind of interesting, we didn't talk about the AAII uh, ratings yesterday. We sort of ran out of time for it, but there was a narrowing of sentiment of sorts here. So you have 35% bulls and you have 43% bears. So more bears than bulls still, even with the nice rally in stocks. So I think there's still a lot of skepticism baked in with, uh, with individual investors. There have been less and less bears every week, which is notable. But I think what's most notable is with this rally, you actually had less bulls. So it's not like people have been getting more bullish as the markets rallied. You're actually getting a narrowing. It's almost an indecision of sort. And the difference between the two remaining pretty steady, about 8% favoring bears over bulls. So I think it, it speaks to indecision. It doesn't speak to dramatic bullishness that's overtaking things. Within consumer, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, this is a, a ratio that's weighted very heavily to uh, Amazon. We're looking at consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. When you look at the, uh, at the equal weighted ratio at the bottom, you can see it's a little more even handed with a, a, a sideways trend. So again, even though the market has recovered uh, dramatically from the March lows, consumer has not been the place that it's been, which is unusual. Usually you would expect this ratio to be driving higher pretty strongly, but there are a lot of consumer names that, uh, that have remained relatively weak, sort of an even, uh, even, even Stephen between the two. One more or two that I wanted to do, um, small caps actually continuing to underperform. And again, today we had a nice rally in small caps, but overall the trend has remained very muted. So it still speaks to the relative performance of the large mega cap trade. I would also point out, we again, as usual, have not seen a return to value just yet. Growth continues to outperform value any way that I would measure it. So again, I, I, I've heard that quote unquote return of value a number of times in the last, you know, the last uh, couple of months, and it just hasn't happened. There hasn't been this time when value names have really emerged. It's the, sort of the growthy mega cap names uh, that have done the uh, that have done the best. Very last thing I wanted to point out was this one, which was looking at stocks versus bonds. This ratio had been so weak, but since the third week in March, it continues to push higher. So in terms of asset allocation, really leaning more towards equities risk on versus the risk off nature of the, uh, the treasury bond market. That's our wrap of the week for today. And, and boy, I mean, so many interesting charts. Again, we're just touching the, the surface of it. I hope you can use this as an inspiration to continue your work. Uh, when you have some downtime over the next couple of days and, uh, and prepare mentally for what comes on Monday. We're going to take a quick commercial break back, opening the final bar mailbag. We'll see you in a minute. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for joining us for the, uh, the final bar every weekday after the close. Uh, we're going to open the final bar mailbag momentarily. I just want to remind you, we'd love to answer your questions. The questions we're answering today came to us in the last, last day or two. So keep them coming. The final bar at stockcharts.com. You can send us anything you need, questions on the product, questions on the markets, on technical analysis, on decision making, behavioral finance, uh, market structure, whatever uh, is on your mind. We're happy to help you and Bring on some great guests to help answer your questions. So we just shoot us an email, thefinalbar at stockcharts.com or on Twitter at finalbarsctv. And this first question actually comes uh, via Twitter. Uh, we were asked, can you comment about 100-day versus 150-day versus 200-day moving averages and what you like paired with the 50-day moving average? I love that question and thank you so much for it. 
Um, so, so here's the thing. You have probably seen, if you've watched the show for a while, I have a very straightforward technical toolkit. I don't get much into the exotic things normally. I, I am fascinated by anything technical and I've you know, enjoyed picking uh, experts' brains on a lot of different topics that are a little more esoteric, but my go-to charts are pretty simplistic. So I use the 50 and the 200 day moving averages uh, more often than not. And the reason I do that is because, uh, you know, again, from my time at Bloomberg, my time here at Stock Charts, uh, my time working heavily with institutional investors, 90%, maybe more of them, if they look at a daily chart of a stock, it has the 200 day moving average and it usually has the 50 day moving average on there too. So I, I think of this portion of technical analysis as the value of getting inside of other investors' heads. And I, I appreciate looking at things that I know other investors managing plenty of money are looking at when they're making decisions on a stock. And, and again, I think that's why when a stock hits a 50 day, when a stock hits a, the 200 day moving average, I know there are investors out there that use those as triggers and that's why I wanna be aware of them. So for me, I'm looking a lot less at crossovers. You will hear me very uh, rarely mention a 50 and 200 day crossover. Because honestly, I found it's not a great uh, toolkit for me. Um, you know, is a very lagging indicator and you'll get this sort of scenario where it finally triggers when things are already, you know, very accelerated. And, and that's one of the challenges, to be honest, with the long-term trend following model that I've, I've shared with you, right? So it, it turned negative pretty much around the bottom here in the last, uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, so, so I've always struggled, I think, a little bit with the crossover technique. If I was going to base something on moving average crossovers, I'd probably use some other uh, other other uh, combinations of things. For me, it's about where the price is relative to the moving averages, number one, and it's the slope of the moving averages. And I usually pay a lot of attention to the slope of the 50-day. I'll pay attention to where we are at relative to the 200-day, the slope of the two. And in general, I always tell people, if your price is above two upward sloping moving averages, you're in great shape. And if in general, you aim your portfolio of equities toward those types of stocks, in general, as a trend follower, you're gonna do pretty well, I would, I would argue. Um, so I don't get any more crazy than that. And so I use the 50 and 200 day for that. I have worked with analysts who swear by the 150 day moving average and, and insist that it is the most important one to do. That's fine. And again, I think what's, what's most important for you as an investor is find the combination that makes sense for you in your time frame. Me, I want to use what I know other people are using. And these are certainly the most popular that I've, uh, that I've seen out there. Um, I would point out on weekly charts, I tend to use the 40 week, which lines up pretty closely with the 200 day and the 150 week, which I've used for a number of years as a very long term uh, measurement. And also I've talked with Grayson Rose here at Stock Charts about doing sort of the moving average ribbon, doing like the 10 day all the way up to the 200 day and doing a bunch in between. And that's kind of a cool uh, technique. I don't show it on here uh, very often, but uh, something I enjoy. And uh, Dave Landry, if you've not seen his work, he does a good job looking at uh, multiple moving averages and how they relate to each other. So thanks for the question via Twitter there. Question number two, let me get to, uh, let me literally open the mailbag here to find your question. Uh, let's see, how do you use your chart of, uh, of stocks, of the S&P stocks, and do you uh, sort them by scooter rankings? Oh, that's, yeah, that's a really good question. So, you know, and again, I apologize. I think I, I referred to this earlier and I just completely blew through it and I'm so sorry. I will try to just um, be a little clearer. So I have this chart, uh, this list here. And as I mentioned on, on the air a number of times, every weekend I go through the S&P 500 charts and I start with Charter Communications, which is the first one within communication services, and I go down the list. The way that I sort them is like this. I'll bring up screen. Uh, you can create a new chart list, and I'll show you that in a second. I sort it on industry, then I sort it by sector, and that will basically sort it on sector first, industry second. It'll start with Charter Communications. It'll go down the list through the groups because I want to look at similar types of companies together. So I want to look at at and and Verizon together and Activision and Electronic Arts together. So if you group them by the industry, it kind of puts them together. And that's really helpful when you get to like energy or when you get to financials and you get to group the different banks together versus insurance companies. Once you manipulate the list, um, uh, you can uh, go to the bottom and click on number in sorted order. All that's going to do is make sure that you keep this order in your chart list. Um, the other thing that is common that I've seen people do, Greg Chanel has, uh, has told me this is a great technique as well, sort on scooter rankings and save the list that way and actually flip through the charts uh, that way. That can be another way to just see within a group what are the strongest stocks within a universe that you're looking at, and then you can sort it the other way and, and, or just start at the bottom of the list and see what are the really beaten down names. And again, by looking at the sectors, you can start to put together some of the cool uh, cool themes about that. So if you've never, if you're not familiar with it, click on your dashboard, you click on chart lists, which is this button on the upper right. Um, you have a button here on the right side that says new, give it a name um, and then click create new chart list. 
And then you have ways of entering tickers. And what you want to do is click from group. And we have a bunch of predefined groups like the S&P 500 members, specific sectors, whatever you want to do. And it'll automatically import those tickers. You can start from there. All right. So that's the, uh, that's the answer. The third question I had was about chart packs. And I, we don't have time for me to actually get to the text of the question. But I remember it was basically saying, um, you know, I had some chart packs installed. I haven't updated them. What's the deal with that? And, and how do they work? Um, so uh, basically, if you click on, go to your dashboard and click on chart lists, if you go down to the bottom of your list, and I have a bunch of these, sorry, I've created probably too many. I should tighten these up at some point when I've got some minutes. Down here, you'll see manage chart packs. And what this is going to do is show you anything that you've installed. So you can see I've installed my own. I haven't installed this one because there are my own charts, but um, I've installed Arthur Hill's chart list. I remember when I first created a login, I popped some of those in there. And what happens is you will see a reinstall. And if it's something of itself for a while, Arthur, myself, and others, uh, the decision point folks, uh, Carl and Aaron Swinlin, when they update their chart pack, it will automatically trigger this button. So if you haven't reinstalled them, refresh them in a while, come back to the page I just showed you, click reinstall, and it will actually update all of the charts with their newest changes. Or you can take, you can install what they did, save them as your own chart, our chart packs, chart lists, and, uh, and, and tweet tweak them, do whatever you want. And I think that's what I intended with my morning coffee routine. So if you install that, which you're welcome to do, make it your own, take things out that you don't like, add things that you do like, and, and build it more and more into your own uh, chart list. So the idea of this is to populate your chart list with things that some of the experts at stock charts have found to be really helpful. And, and when I was just learning stock charts, I found it to be a really cool way to see what the capabilities were. And, and again, some of these experts use chart, use stock charts really, really well. They're power users and they've got ways of Arthur, for example, he, I often am, am pinging him and asking him how he did certain things because he's so good at manipulating the, uh, the platform. So that is chart packs. Again, you can get to both of those from your, uh, your dashboard and, uh, and good luck. And if you have questions, just shoot a question into our uh, support team that can help you out. We need to wrap the show. We've got the three and three. It's more like the three and about two, but we will, uh, we will get through them. Chart number one is the S&P market trend. So again, just I'm, I'm very long-term minded as we're, as we're wrapping the week. I love Friday's show to just make sense of what happened this week. And again, I, there's no denying that we finished this week in a period of strength. Again, I'm, what my concern is that we have rallied so much and so quickly, you know, the market tends to overreact in both ways. It tends to overreact fear on the downside, overreact fear of missing out on the upside. I would argue, I think there's been a lot of FOMO in this rally as, as people have been you know, so nervous about missing the next move higher. And again, at some point, the reason why the markets fluctuate is at some point you go above where you should be based on the reasonable valuation for these stocks and for the, uh, for the, the situation with the economy. And I would argue from a technical perspective, we're probably nearing those levels up from a number of, of reasons. And so for me, this long-term chart is helping remind me the tactical time frame has certainly been strong. That's what I'm seeing here but the intermediate and long-term timeframes remain uh, more negative in my, in my opinion. Chart number two is a daily chart of the S&P. And again, for me, going into next week, I think the RSI on the S&P 500 and seeing if it's able to break above 60 would be, uh, would be interesting. If we're able to do that, I'm gonna start thinking, wow, could we actually make it back to uh, previous highs? And again, I, just, I think we're entering, you know, again, we're in the weeds of, of where, right about where you'd think uh, the uh, a bear market rally would exhaust. And, and so I think looking for follow through on Monday, or if we, uh, you know, if we uh, fail here at a declining 50 day moving average, I think that will tell you a lot about what the next leg will most likely be. The final chart we talked in our, in our uh, wrap the week segment about some of the breadth indicators. And this is one that I think is interesting. You know, as I'm thinking of chart, the, the first chart, and we're looking at that long-term model, what I asked some of my guests, what would convince you that we're in the clear that we're sort of able to go go all in and that the market's going to go back and retest previous highs. And the way I might answer that question is looking at this chart and looking at whether or not we're able to get a series more and more stocks making new 52 week highs, which means they have recovered all of the way. And it's only going to come from a handful of names to start, but more and more you could see stocks sort of, uh, you know, getting uh, out of the, getting into the clear, getting out of this congestion area and building more of a sustainable uptrend. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a, uh, a wrap for the show and a wrap for this week. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close for The Final Bar. Really appreciate all of your questions. Send anything our way, The Final Bar at StockCharts.com. All of our previous uh, episodes and all the other shows are on our YouTube channel. For StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a great weekend. 
Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.